Well, good afternoon, everyone, and let me thank you for your patience this afternoon with the scheduling. Uh, I know that you, like all of us, um, have primarily the horrific events of San Bernardino at the top of your mind, and let me take a minute before we begin today's announcement to address that shooting briefly. Um, as has been stated earlier today, the FBI has now taken a leadership role in that investigation, working in conjunction with state and local law enforcement who have been truly, truly outstanding partners in this enterprise, as well as working with the ATF and the U.S. Marshals Service. And as this investigation unfolds, we intend to provide any and all assistance necessary to both local authorities and, most importantly, to the people of San Bernardino who have been so profoundly affected by this unspeakable crime. As I stated earlier this morning, I know that I stand with all Americans when I say that my thoughts and prayers and those of my colleagues at every level of the Department of Justice are with the families and loved ones of the victims and with the brave public safety officials who put themselves in harm's way to save others. And now, moving on to today's announcement. Again, I am joined here today uh, by U.S. Attorney Robert Capers of the Eastern District of New York, uh, by Special Agent in Charge, uh, I'm sorry, the Assistant Director in Charge of the New York Office of the FBI, Diego Rodriguez, Chief of Investigation Richard Weber of the IRS Criminal Investigation Division. Six months ago, the Department of Justice announced a 47-count indictment charging 14 defendants with pervasive and long-running conspiracies in the world of organized soccer. We allege that these defendants, which included high-ranking FIFA officials, leaders of governing bodies under the FIFA umbrella, and sports marketing executives had corrupted the business of worldwide soccer to serve their interest and to enrich themselves. We stated then our determination to end these practices, to root out this corruption and to bring the wrongdoers to justice. And we pledge to work with our partners around the world to hold additional co-conspirators and corrupt individuals accountable. Today, we are announcing a superseding indictment, which includes new charges against new defendants as well as additional arrests and guilty pleas in connection with our ongoing investigation. Earlier, a federal grand jury in Brooklyn has returned a 92-count superseding indictment, which includes charges against 16 new defendants, all of whom are current or former soccer officials. These defendants include the sitting presidents of two of FIFA's six continental soccer confederations, CONCACAF, which covers North and Central America and the Caribbean, and CONMEBOL, which covers South America. Both of these defendants arrested today, Alfredo Howitt of Honduras and Juan Angel Naput of Paraguay, are also FIFA vice presidents and members of its executive committee. In addition, this superseding indictment charges high-ranking officials of other soccer governing bodies, including the current and former presidents of national soccer federations in Central and South America. Each of the 16 new defendants is charged with racketeering conspiracy and with other crimes in connection with their sustained abuse as set forth in the indictment of their positions for financial gain. Earlier today, Swiss authorities arrested two of these new defendants, Alfredo Howitt and Juan Angel Naput, as they gathered to attend FIFA meetings in Zurich. We are now working to extradite those defendants to the United States, just as we also are working to secure the arrest and extradition of additional defendants who are residing in other countries. Now, in addition to naming the new defendants, the superseding indictment also expands the bribery and corruption charges set forth in the original indictment unsealed last May. As you will recall, we used the chart to my right to illustrate this scheme. In the original indictment, we allege that between 1991 and the present, two generations of soccer officials conspired to solicit and to receive well over 200 million U.S. dollars, often through an alliance with sports marketing executives who sought to obtain lucrative contracts and shut out competitors through the systematic payment of bribes and kickbacks. We also alleged bribes and kickbacks in connection with the sponsorship of the Brazilian Soccer Federation, by a major U.S. sportswear company, the selection of the host country for the 2010 World Cup, and the 2011 FIFA presidential election. The new charges, unsealed today, highlight corruption schemes principally involving soccer officials in Central and South America and sports marketing companies based in South America and the United States. 
Now, consistent with the intergenerational nature of the corruption schemes, they involve payments relating to tournaments that have already been played, as well as matches scheduled into the next decade, including multiple cycles of FIFA World Cup qualifiers and international friendly matches involving six Central American member associations. They also involve a bribery scheme relating to the sale of broadcasting rights implicating nearly all of the top CONMEBOL officials and an Argentinian sports marketing company scheme to bribe Central American soccer officials. Not content to hijack, hijack the world's most popular sport for decades of ill-gotten gains, these defendants, as alleged, sought to institutionalize their corruption to ensure that it lived on, not for the good of the game, but for their own personal aggrandizement and gain. Now, the roles of several of the defendants newly charged today in these schemes illustrate the depth as well as the persistence of the alleged corruption. The defendant, Hector Trujillo, currently serves as a judge on the Constitutional Court of Guatemala, purportedly dispensing justice by day while allegedly soliciting bribes and selling his influence within FIFA. Another defendant, Alfredo Howitt, ascended to the position of CONCACAF president that was left open when we charged his predecessor with corruption in May of this year, and then, as alleged, assumed the mantle of those same corrupt practices. The defendant, Ariel Alvarado, is a member of FIFA's disciplinary committee, entrusted with stamping out the corrupt behavior in which he is now alleged to be involved. Now, let me say that the betrayal of trust that is set forth here is truly outrageous, and the scale of corruption alleged herein is unconscionable. And the message from this announcement should be clear to every culpable individual who remains in the shadows, hoping to evade this ongoing investigation, you will not wait us out, and you will not escape our focus. I'm also announcing today that many have already heeded that warning. Today, I can report that eight additional defendants have agreed to plead guilty for their involvement in the corruption schemes that we have outlined. After the initial charges were filed in May, these eight defendants came forward and accepted responsibility for their criminal conduct. Five of them were not named in the original indictment. As I have stated before, anyone who seeks to live in the past and re return soccer to its old ways is on the wrong side of progress and does a disservice to the integrity of this beautiful sport. The Department of Justice is committed to ending the rampant corruption that we have described amidst the leadership of international soccer, not only because of the scale of the schemes alleged both earlier and today, or the brazenness and the breadth of the operation required to sustain such corruption, but also, also because of the affront to international principles that this behavior represents. Global sports like soccer exemplify, in FIFA's own words, unifying, educational, cultural, and humanitarian values. They are one of the primary ways that we teach our children about character, about fair play, and about teamwork. International tournaments promote understanding between nations, and they embody an acknowledgment, frankly, of our common humanity, something that is desperately important in these times of global challenge. And that is why this investigation does more than address corruption in a worldwide sports organization. It also reaffirms the ideals that have always guided our society, and more importantly, our young people, toward the fair and just future that they deserve. And this Department of Justice intends to uphold these values throughout this ongoing investigation and always. I must particularly thank our international partners who have been indispensable in the investigation and carrying out of the actions today, particularly the Swiss authorities, for the close cooperation and the invaluable assistance that they continue to provide. They've been instrumental in bringing these wrongdoers to justice and helping to restore the integrity of a vital athletic tradition. Today's action also relied on the tireless work of federal investigators and prosecutors in the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Eastern District of New York, in the FBI's New York field office, and in the Los Angeles field office of the IRS's Criminal Investigation Division. I am incredibly grateful to all of the agents, all the analysts, and all the attorneys who continue to devote, to devote their time and their attention to this important investigation. 
And now at this time, I'm going to introduce to you and turn the podium over to United States Attorney Robert Capers, who's done an outstanding job leading this effort since his appointment in October, and who will provide additional details on today's announcement. Thank you, Loretta. <clears throat> Good afternoon. The superseding indictment that was unsealed today charges 16 additional soccer officials for their roles in corrupting international soccer. These officials hold a variety of leadership positions and represent countries from across the Western Hemisphere. Each and every one of them was entrusted with significant responsibilities to develop and promote the sport of soccer with integrity. These officials were supposed to lead the federations confederations, and FIFA itself with the fair advancement of the sport as their primary goal. From building soccer fields and cultivating soccer programs in developing countries to ensuring that lucrative broadcasting and marketing rights to international soccer tournaments and World Cup qualifying matches were sold at market rates, all to, benefit, all to the benefit of the participating soccer federations that were charged with bringing the game of soccer to their respective countries. Instead, as alleged in today's superseding indictment, they abuse their positions of authority and trust to enrich themselves through bribes and kickbacks. They repeatedly use the institutions they were supposed to serve year after year to satisfy their own greed. Now, as the Attorney General noted, the 16 defendants charged in the superseding indictment include high-ranking FIFA officials and top-level officials of CONCACAF and CONMEBOL, the two soccer federations that operate under FIFA's umbrella to organize soccer from North America, through Central America, through South America. And those are including, and they include, Alfredo Howitt and Juan Angel Naput, who are the current presidents of CONCACAF and CONMEBOL, and who also serve as FIFA vice presidents and executive committee members. Also included are the current and former general secretaries and treasurers of CONMEBOL. One of those men, Romer Asuna, is alleged to have taken millions of dollars in bribes as the former treasurer of Comnibol. And amazingly, he's now a member of FIFA's Audit and Compliance Committee, one of the FIFA subcommittees charged with developing reform proposals and instituting change. Also included are the presidents of the soccer federations in El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and Panama, all part of UNCAF, the Central American Regional, Regional Soccer Union operating within the CONCACAF umbrella. Also included are the current president of the Brazilian Soccer Federation, Marco Polo Donero, who just last week announced that he, resigned, he was resigning from the FIFA Executive Committee, as well as also charged as the former president of the Brazilian Soccer Federation and former member of the FIFA Executive Committee. And finally, also charged are the former presidents of the Soccer Federations of Bolivia, Ecuador, Paraguay, and Peru. Now a word about the charges. As in the original indictment, count one of the superseding indictment alleges a wide-ranging racketeering conspiracy focused on an enterprise composed of FIFA and its six continental confederations, along with regional confederations, national federations, and sports marketing companies. The two confederations, CONCACAF and COMNIBOL, CONCACAF, which is headquartered in the United States, currently in Miami, Florida, and COMNIBOL, which is headquartered in South America, are the focus of this superseding indictment. Now, the main purpose of this enterprise was to promote and regulate the sport of soccer worldwide. And as you all know, that's an entirely legitimate operation. But the defendants and their co-conspirators are alleged to have corrupted the enterprise by engaging in various criminal activities, including fraud, bribery, and money laundering over the course of two generations. This was accomplished primarily by soccer officials soliciting and receiving bribes and kickbacks from sports marketing executives who were all too willing to pay in order to secure lucrative contracts to buy the media and marketing rights from the various soccer organizations. And what they did then is they sold those rights downstream to broadcasters and corporate sponsors. Today's superseding indictment includes new allegations relating to several schemes that were involved in the payment of bribes in exchange for media and marketing rights. For example, the superseding indictment includes new, new details about the systematic payment of bribes by sports marketing executives to the presidents of six Central American member associations within UNCAF, the regional federation that's part of CONCACAF. 
to obtain the rights to matches played to qualify for the FIFA World Cup and certain international friendly matches. The schemes alleged in the superseding indictment date back several years and in some cases uh, cover the rights of the World Cup qualifiers to be played years into the future in advance of the 2022 World Cup. Another scheme involved nearly all of the top Comnibol officials who are alleged to have received millions of dollars in annual bribe payments, extending back well over a decade in connection with the sale of broadcasting rights to the Copa Libertadores, Comnibol's premier club team tournament. The bribe amounts alleged as part of the scheme are staggering, numbering in the, in the tens of millions. The bribe payers agreed to pay each official between $400,000 and $600,000 per year, and in some cases, up to a million dollars, for as long as those officials remained in office. Also alleged is a scheme by the owners of Full Play, an Argentinian sports marketing company, to break into the CONCACAF market and obtain various rights from CONCACAF by agreeing to pay $450,000 in bribes to three Central American soccer officials to buy their influence. Taken together, the defendants charged in the superseding indictment, along with those who have already pleaded guilty to their involvement in corrupting international soccer, represent nearly every country in Central and South America and occupy leadership roles in CONCACAF and CONMEBOL, extending back well over two decades. For example, three consecutive presidents of CONCACAF, Jack Warner, Jeffrey Webb, and now Alfredo Hawit, and three consecutive presidents of Comnibol, Nicolas Leoz, Eugenio Figueredo, and now Juan Angel Naput, have been indicted on charges of racketeering, conspiracy, and related offenses. All six served on FIFA's executive committees as well. These defendants controlled and corrupted their confederations in succession beginning more than 25 years ago. But by this indictment, we say, not anymore. In addition to unsealing this new indictment today, we are also announcing, announcing the guilty pleas of eight defendants, including Jeffrey Webb, Argentine sports marketing executive Alejandro Brazaco, and Jose Margulis, an intermediary who funneled millions of dollars in bribe money on behalf of Brazaco and others to soccer officials. All three of these defendants have accepted responsibility for their actions through guilty pleas and extensive forfeiture. Other defendants, came forward to accept responsibility for their criminal conduct before they were even charged, including the presidents of the Colombian and Chilean soccer federations and the CEO of a major sports marketing company. Now, by this superseding indictment, I hope the message that the Attorney General and my predecessor, Kelly Curry, have made today and on previous occasions is clear. And if it's not, let me make it clear and amplify the message even more. We are progressing in our efforts to root out what's amounted to decades of systemic corruption and are not anywhere near the end of this investigation. So we say to you, enough is enough. If you're involved in or have a desire to partake in this type of corruption that we're investigating and prosecuting, now is not the time to hold power or seek to gain power. Now is the time to step away, to make room for a new generation of leaders who we hope will give the beautiful game of soccer uh, and millions of its fans the honest leadership it so richly deserves. Now the hard work that led to the charges brought in the underlying indictment and this indictment today have been led by Assistant U.S. Attorney Evan Norris to my far right, Assistant U.S. Attorneys Amanda Hector, Darren Laverne, Kristen Mace, Paul Tuckman, Keith Edelman, Tanya Hajar, and Brian Morris, along with our partners with the FBI and the IRS Criminal Investigations Division. And we look forward to continuing our work with our international partners, particularly the Swiss, who we give special thanks to for their efforts, and, the other, and any others who wish to join this effort, because there's more work to be done, and we aim to do it. And we hope that it becomes an increasingly global effort. Well, thank you, and now I turn the podium over to FBI Assistant Director in Charge, Diego Rodriguez. Thank you, Rob. The most recent wave of the charges announced today is but one more step forward in our effort to leveling the playing field of soccer. Last May, several high-ranking officials and corporate executives affiliated with FIFA were indicted for their roles in a decade-long scheme to corrupt the sport through bribes, kickbacks, and other criminal activity. 
This activity was aimed at controlling lucrative marketing rights to international tournaments, such as the World Cup. Today, we charge 16 more defendants in addition to filing superseding charges on 11 others in a 92-count indictment detailing the alleged ongoing criminal activity of FIFA officials and associates. Some of the illegal activity charged today was discovered throughout our investigation and predates the original charges, but we have found evidence of newly alleged criminal activity more recently carried about by those whose greedy impulses won out over common sense. Today we remind everyone that no one is beyond the reach of the law, and even though soccer is a game to many, it is merely a business enterprise to those profiting from the athletes and the fans. When criminals bring their corrupt activity to our shores by using U.S. banks and U.S. companies to bait bribes and otherwise further their criminal objectives, they will play by our rules. Along with our partners, we uphold our promise to root out, to root out corruption in all its many forms. I want to commend the investigators and the prosecutors of the Department of Justice, the Internal Revenue Service, and the FBI who have pursued this case for so many years. We've made great strides, and I am confident we will continue to move in the right direction. Thank you. I'd like to introduce now Chief Rich Weber from IRS. Thanks, Diego. Good afternoon, everyone. So when I stood before you in May in New York to announce the first phase of this investigation, I said that it was a good day for soccer fans around the world, and today is another good day. FIFA was originally established with good intent and purpose. Unfortunately, as you can see from the decades-long corruption that has been uncovered by the U.S. investigation, good intent has been replaced by greed and misguided goals. My special agents in IRSCI are known as the best financial investigators in the world. This case has been nothing short of one of the most complex worldwide financial investigations ever conducted, and I commend the IRS special agents for their tremendous work and tenacity. The integrity of the U.S. financial system was breached by the individuals named today and in the prior indictment to promote and conceal their criminal schemes through tax fraud, money laundering, racketeering, and other financial crimes. By conspiring to enrich themselves through their criminal conduct relating to media and marketing rights, the defendants undermine the process of fair play and open competition. IRSCI is thoroughly committed to investigate those individuals who engage in corruption, fraud, deceit designed to satisfy their own greed. Last time I commented that this was the World Cup of Fraud, and today through this indictment and the prior one, my statement couldn't be more accurate. In the process of tracing illicit funds through many layers of numerous offshore bank accounts in both the Eastern and Western hemispheres, we have identified hundreds of millions of dollars, proceeds that went through bank accounts around the world. These forfeitable funds represent bribery proceeds, enterprise property, and profits of illegal contracts from their schemes and money laundering conspiracies. The defendants come from over 20 different countries, and we have traced funds through at least 40 different countries in the course of this investigation. Indeed, the World Cup of Fraud. We will continue this investigation aimed at bringing to justice those FIFA officials, sports marketing company executives, money laundering intermediaries, individuals, corporations, or financial institutions that enabled and facilitated such corrupt and illegal schemes. By the time this investigation is concluded, it is my hope that FIFA and the 209 member associations around the globe will have taken the necessary steps to reform themselves and will return the game to those that matter most, the people around the world who simply support and love the game of football everywhere and for all. Thank you for your time, and I turn the podium back to the Attorney General. Thank you, Rich. Thank you all. Uh, Evan. Seth Blatter, the, uh, the president of FIFA, who so far you've not been able to bring any charges against, 
says that this, this investigation is really about sour grapes by the United States because it lost out on its bid to host the World Cup. What do you say to that? You know, I don't have any direct response to Mr. Blatter. Uh, I think he's well aware of the nature of our charges. I think he's probably spending a great deal of time reading through the 92 pages of our superseding indictment, which I believe speaks for itself. This investigation covers years of conduct by dozens and dozens of people, both in the past and literally into the future. Uh, what I called it outrageous and unconscionable before still stands. Uh, so our investigation is focused on the facts and the evidence and where they lead. Yes, ma'am. Two of the uh, persons indicted are in Brazil. There is no treaty of extradition between Brazil and the United States. Do we assume by that that those indictments will go nowhere? And if I can ask you, when when new phases of the investigations are announced, what are what is going to be the focus? What 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 are you going to investigate? With respect to individuals who are in other countries, including Brazil, uh, a number of those countries we have treaties with and some we do not. However, that does not preclude our view that we still may ultimately obtain those defendants in a U.S. courtroom. Others have chosen to come in before, and we also do not know about those individuals' travel plans. With respect to the second part of your question, the next phase of our investigation, as we have stated, this investigation is ongoing. I'm not able to comment about the specifics of that except to say that we still have a number of avenues under investigation, and as we resolve more and more individual matters, we learn more and more avenues to review. And then all the way to the back. Uh, a couple of points. Uh, you say in your statement uh, that um, you allege five kickbacks in connection with the sponsorship of the Brazilian soccer federation by a major U.S. sponsor company. It's certainly been reported that that major U.S. sponsor company is Nike. Can you confirm that, first of all? Secondly, are you actually, at some point, as Mr. Weber seemed to suggest, actually going to go after companies, financial institutions, in the sense of a potential target or subject of indictment? I'm not going to be able to confirm the identities of anyone or any of the entities beyond what we have listed today in the indictment, except to say that the investigation is ongoing. Uh, and it is very, very far-reaching. And because it is still open and ongoing, I'm not able to give you the, the specifics to the second part of your answer, so I'm sorry for that. Let me come back to the front row to Pierre. Madam Attorney General, um, shifting gears back to California, where the nation is gripped with wanting to know more. Can you give us a sense of where the investigation is now? Uh, any information that these two suspects were on the U.S. <laughs> law enforcement or intelligence radar before, excuse me, before the attacks and any information that these suspects were in contact with uh, suspected Islamic radicals? Well, what I can tell you uh, with regard to the current investigation, uh, I believe a lot of information was provided quite recently by a local press conference, and it's also my understanding that there will be another local press conference uh, later this evening, I believe at 7 o'clock uh, Pacific time. And so the specific operational details I will leave to the assistant director in charge as well as the sheriffs who are working on that. I can tell you that uh, the FBI, along with ATF and U.S. Marshals, are directly engaged in this investigation. They are fanning out and doing a number of interviews of individuals who may have information or may not. We simply do not know. We are reviewing uh, all information that we can about the two decedents. Uh, at this point in time, it is, it is literally simply too early to ascribe either a motive or to describe their connections to other groups. Uh, we do know that the gentleman who's deceased uh, the man who's deceased was an employee of the organization having the holiday party. So we don't know, as we stated earlier, whether this is workplace rage or something larger or a combination of both. Uh, and so I, I really do not want to uh, try and describe their motives or intentions at this point. What I will say is that, uh, as I said before, you, there will be another press conference later this evening. Um, as we learn more information, it will be provided. Uh, the director and I did brief the president this morning. Uh, and he's also very involved in this matter. One final question. The level of mass shootings we've been seeing in the country this year in particular, how concerned are you about it and what do you plan to do about it? Well, I will tell you that the loss of life by mass shooting or any, or any means is a matter of grave concern to the department in general and to me as the attorney general. Um, it is something that we find to be a tragedy, as in this specific case. 
whatever the motive, uh, as with all the different types of mass shootings that we've seen, we've seen so many different types of backgrounds of the individuals involved. I think it's incumbent upon all of us to be vigilant in our surroundings, um, to if you do see something, say something, be it whether you think it's terrorism or whether you think it is a workplace rage, someone who may take something out on individuals. Law enforcement stands ready to respond. Let me go right behind you to the lady. Hi. Uh, going back to the Brazilian defendant, uh, you said that the absence of the extradition does not preclude the possibility of them being presented to U.S. courts. Could you detail how this could happen without the extradition treaty? And if you could tell, how is the collaboration with the Brazilian government? Because there is a decision by the justice in Brazil that suspended the cooperation between the investigation in Brazil and the U.S. How it affects the investigation? I'm not going to be able to go into the specifics of our discussions with the Brazilian authorities, except to say that we actually have had very positive interactions with a number of countries around the world, and we look forward to that continuing. To the extent that, com that countries uh, may have taken actions in the general, we still hope that when it comes to specific cases, we'll be able to, to work with them on this. As to the specifics of how defendants are obtained by the U.S. in the absence of an extradition treaty, there are also a number of ways defendants often choose to come forward. Um, there are a number of ways in which they can come under our jurisdiction. So beyond that, I'm not able to give you any specifics. And I'm going to go right behind you to the lady right behind you. Thank you, Sonisha, of the Channel 13 of Chile. I would like to know if you can elaborate a little bit more on under what conditions are these uh, convicted defendants like uh, Sergio Jadue uh, of Chile? What are the conditions? Are they free? Are they on their arrest? Uh, are they cooperating with the Department of Justice? Can you please tell me? Thank you for the question. With respect to those individuals as well as the eight individuals whose guilty pleas we've announced today, we're not announcing uh, the, the status of any of them in terms of whether they may or may not be witnesses because that's something that we do not discuss before a trial or a proceeding begins. With respect to their bail status, I'll ask the U.S. Attorney to give you the specifics on that information. Just one moment. Uh, I'm actually going to defer that question to uh, Assistant U.S. Attorney Evan Norris. Uh, Mr. Hadaway uh, is has been released on bail. Is he free to leave the country? Is he in the United States? Can he leave the country? I'm not, we're not able to provide further information on his bail conditions at this time, uh, and so I apologize for that. Let me just also uh, correct something. I indicated that the local press conference regarding the San Bernardino matter would be at 7 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. I've just been informed it's actually going to be 7 p.m. Eastern time. So I'm sorry for that, uh, that misinformation there. And let me come all the way to the side to you, Doug. Attorney General, can you explain the rationale behind the feds taking over the case? I understand you're still looking at a lot of things, but there's still a lot of things you don't know, but what is the thought process behind deciding the FBI should be the lead agency? Well, at this point in time, we don't know the motivation. We don't know uh, whether it was a terrorist act. We don't know whether it was a workplace rage act. Uh, but because we can't rule anything out, uh, the FBI is taking a leadership role. But I do want to stress that this is in conjunction with the local authorities uh, and with their cooperation, and they've been truly outstanding in this. Uh, we simply don't know. I will also note that, as is often the case in, in these investigative matters, we do not know where any, where any charges may lie. These two individuals who are the shooters are deceased. Uh, we don't know if any others were involved. Right now we're focusing on those two individuals. Um, so at this point, it is still an investigation to determine, we, although we know what happened, but why did it happen, uh, how did they obtain the means for this, and what else might have been going on, what else might have been planned. Assistant director in charge, and you know, I said earlier today. Yes. Yeah, the assistant director in charge in LA earlier today said that they are looking at the foreign travels of both the suspects. Have you uh, reached out to your uh, contemporaries in Saudi Arabia or Pakistan to uh, garner their assistance? Well, certainly, obviously, uh, we always look at the foreign travel involved, and we are, aren't sure of the motivations, and as, as uh, in many circumstances, and I'm not going to be able to comment on contact that we may be taking undertaking with our foreign counterparts. Right behind you, the gentleman right behind you. Thank you. 
Could you please elaborate on the level of cooperation provided by any of the 20 countries in the hemisphere? You said that in general, many international, but could you please elaborate on the region? You can give us an idea which better, which countries co cooperated the most, which ones and how, you know, give us an idea of if there was cooperation, maybe there was, I don't know. Well, I can certainly tell you that the Swiss authorities cooperated greatly. Uh, Evan, do you have more to add on that? I will say, however, that uh, in general, uh, we want them all to continue to cooperate with us, so we won't be saying who didn't. <laughs> yes. as, as we've noted in the press release, um, we have thanked the, the authorities in Brazil and Colombia for their assistance, um, but there are, are also a number of other uh, countries that have uh, cooperated with our investigation and have provided extensive assistance, uh, but at this time we're not uh, in a position to identify which countries those are. I'm going to come back to the front to this lady here, and then there's a gentleman right, two people behind you. Thank you. Attorney General, two quick questions uh, following up on the California shootings. While it's clear that the motivation is, as I've said, is still unknown, some have suggested this is some sort of hybrid of workplace violence and terrorism. And given developments today, it appears the federal government is treating this as terrorism and is pursuing their investigation in that respect. Is that accurate? I would say that we're pursuing the investigation wherever it leads, and that certainly because of the, uh, of the planning that was clearly involved in this is something that we have to take very seriously, uh, but we have not ruled out the workplace issue, and frankly, something else could develop. Uh, with this investigation is being worked very intensely. As I indicated, uh, the FBI, ATF, and the marshals are on the ground with local authorities conducting interviews, um, reviewing evidence, and it is an ongoing open matter. Um, so at this point, I think it would be premature to try and limit it to any one particular motive. And acknowledging that there are still questions about these suspects, but speaking generally, can you talk about the challenges that you face in trying to identify and track homegrown radicals or terrorists? Well, I think we've talked about that in, in other contexts before. Uh, for us, uh, obviously, it's a matter of grave concern to us. Any threat to the homeland, to U.S. interests here or abroad is of great concern uh, to the Department of Justice and to me personally as the Attorney General. Uh, it's something that we take very seriously. Uh, we have a wide range of investigative techniques that we utilize for that. Uh, and as we have discussed in other contexts, we do it also consistent with the protection of civil liberties and privacy interests. So I'm not going to be able to go into the specifics of any particular case, uh, except to say that it's something that is always of grave importance to us and is one of our top priorities. Any particular challenges for you? I think the, the challenges of any investigation are there, whether it's a homegrown extremist or someone who's influenced uh, by overseas teachings. At this point, we do not have information. I do want to stress, we do not have information about what influenced either of these two individuals. We do know that the man was an employee of the company, but we do not know and we cannot limit ourselves to his motivation, nor do we have insight at the moment into the motivations of the woman, his wife, who was with him. So uh, we're, while we're not ruling it out, I do not want to essentially um, give misinformation and, and indicate that we have an answer when we do not. Thank you, Thank you very much, um, Marcelo Nino from Brazilian newspaper, Politico and Paulo. First question, um, Brazil was mentioned as, as one of the countries that uh, are cooperating with this investigation. So could you um, uh, specify what kind of cooperation Brazil is giving and uh, what else do you expect from Brazil? And secondly, um, one uh, main missing uh, for many people, for me for sure, is Joseph Lacker. Uh, especially when um, you mentioned that uh, there are there are a lag rights and kickbacks regarding uh, 2011 and FIFA elections, uh, uh, presidential elections. So could you talk a, a little bit about this and how um, uh, Blatter is involved in this? Well, at this point, because if for any individual not named, uh, I'm not able to discuss their role at all at this point in time. What I can tell you is that the investigation continues. Uh, and the investigation is, has many, many focuses and, and is focused on many individuals. With respect to the cooperation that Brazil provided in this investigation, we are extremely grateful to the cooperation of our law enforcement counterparts in Brazil, and I'm not able to go into the particulars of the, t of the cooperation, so I'm sorry for that. I'm going to come straight over to this gentleman here. So the indictments have said that kickbacks and bribes were an attempt to get into the lucrative North American markets, and the United States is the largest, largest and most lucrative market in the world, yet nobody from U.S. soccer has been mentioned yet in these indictments. Are they not the subject of the investigation, or 
Can we expect to see charges from them coming in the future? I'm not able to comment on any potential subjects if they're not named today, so I'm sorry for that. So can we assume from that that if they haven't been indicted so far that they aren't the subject of an investigation? You cannot because I'm not able to comment on, uh, on any potential other subjects. If they're not named today, uh, we're not going to comment on anyone else who may or may not be involved. So. People from the United States Soccer Federation to be cooperative in the investigation that you dealt with them. I'm not going to comment on the level of anyone else's cooperation. So, and actually, there's a lady, two people behind you, and then I'll come back to the gentleman in front of you. Uh, yes, uh, we understand that there was a raid uh, this morning by FBI agents. And oh, we understand that there was a raid this morning at a company called Media World in Miami um, that is also named. Uh, in the case, and we were just wondering if there was any additional information about that raid, and also if you think there will be down the line another uh, series of indictments. I'm not able to comment on uh, any other information other than what you have about Media World. Uh, what I can say is that this investigation is active, it is ongoing, and as always, we anticipate additional charges. There's a gentleman directly in front of you. Um, Madam Attorney General. Considering that this is an ongoing and far-reaching investigation, can you see a, a point at which uh, the investigation would affect the uh, ability for Russia and Qatar to host the next two World Cups? You know, I think at this point I'm not able to give you any, any response on that. I'm not able to comment on what may or may not happen with um, the games that have already been awarded. Um, I, we're just not able to provide that information, so I, I'm sorry for that. Actually, you just asked... I'll come back to you. I just want to make sure if someone hasn't asked a question, if they, yes. I'm sorry. Uh, just switching back to California for a second. I, I appreciate you said repeatedly that there's no motive that's officially been ascribed. But is it safe to say, because at a certain point, a decision has to be made, here's how we're going to treat this, and here's, going, here's who's going to take the lead on this. Um, is it being currently treated as a terrorism investigation until it's been rolled out? So in other words, does, does the ticket kind of go to the counterterrorism division until otherwise specified at the moment? You know, it's actually a little too early to, to say that I know what, what you mean. At this point, the FBI is involved, ATF is involved, the marshals are involved, local law enforcement is involved. Everyone is literally surging resources to this. Um, certainly, again, there could be a terrorism motive. There could not be. Uh, it has not been ruled out. It has not been finalized. The FBI is, is running the show, so to speak. I mean, the, is it the counterterrorism division, the criminal division? Well, I think you, you, you're hearing from the assistant director in charge of the Los Angeles office, uh, and he'll be, he's the point of contact if you need, and he's the person who is supervising the field operations at this time. And I'm going to come back to the gentleman right behind you and then Evan. Now, does the Justice Department have the scope of the whole size of the, the bribery in international soccer, or are you just in, still in the discovery? Well, I think that we're always learning more information and new information, as we've outlined today. However, as the IRS director has indicated, um, we have noticed accounts running through, I think it was 40, um, 40 countries, um, and millions and millions of dollars. So we have, we believe, a very good picture of the scope of the bribery and the scope of the corruption. What concerns us is the alleged depth of the corruption, uh, both in the past and reaching into the future. So while we feel we do have uh, a view into the nature of the corruption, the endemic nature of the corruption, and the widespread nature of the corruption that we've alleged both today and in May, we are, of course, concerned about the viability of the organization going forward and that, that the organization take all appropriate steps to make sure that its efforts going forward are open, fair, and honest. Okay, I have time for one more question. And I promise I'll that question. You uh, and others have mentioned uh, frequency with which you have to talk about mass shootings in, in this country. I'm wondering if you have any thoughts of specific things you can do in the time that you have remaining in office to try to stop some of these, to try to reduce the number of these that you keep having to address. Well, there's a lot of discussion about, um, about matters that, that could possibly be helpful uh, in terms of how we how we handle these cases, and some of those actions would have to be taken by Congress, of course, and I, I don't know whether they're having those discussions or not. I certainly don't have any announcements for you today, uh, except to say that we will continue uh, to investigate and prosecute these cases to the fullest extent of our resources, that not just the FBI, but the ATF is, is completely invested in these. There's no ATF director right now, so. We do not have a confirmed ATF director. The current leader of the ATF 
um, is, uh, is an outstanding uh, veteran agent, former Marine, with years of experience and a complete dedication to the protection of the American people. And both the administration and I have the greatest confidence in him as he's leading the agency now. So, and we are committed, uh, both as ATF and the full Department of Justice, uh, to investigating and prosecuting these gun cases to the fullest extent of our ability. Thank you. I just want to make sure that if there was anyone who had not asked a question, and it was this young lady and this gentleman here. I don't, did you ask a question? No, I didn't. All right, so you're the last three. You know this. All right, okay. Related to the subject of international cooperation specific to Switzerland, what was your reaction to Switzerland's decision in September to announce its criminal inquiry into Sepp Blatter by name? If you recall, I was with uh, the Attorney General of Switzerland during that time period uh, and congratulated him on the investigative work that his office had taken and thanked him again for their great cooperation with us. Uh, their investigation is proceeding, uh, and I don't have a comment on it beyond that except to say that we think that uh, the more eyes looking at this important issue, the better. I have someone in the, this gentleman here. Um, just to, to ask you, if I may, there's obviously a very big soccer tournament taking place on U.S. soil next year. When the American public sits down to watch that or goes to the games, can you assure them that the deals underpinning that tournament are straight? You know, I think that's 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 an excellent question, and it's it's a good question. I think our investigation would seek to do that, uh, and for that to happen, we certainly need the continued efforts of all those who work in international soccer to make sure that the deals they strike are free of corruption, and that the reforms that FIFA puts in place are open and transparent and give the public that confidence that you're talking about. Yes, I had a question Thank you. Uh, about a very interesting line in the press release where it said that uh, the forfeitures that have been gained through this case are being reserved against possible claims for restitution that could come in the various criminal cases. Who would the victims be in cases like this who would actually seek restitution? It's kind of an interesting question. Yes, yes, and, and I'm going to ask uh, Evan to, to address that. Essentially, it's our, it's our view that because this corruption essentially hurts uh, those people who participate in the game, um, as well as the organization itself, and FIFA does have many outstanding commitments there, that we felt it was appropriate to take that step. You know, I think it's... <clears throat> So too early to say what the full uh, scope of the potential victims are in this case, but I think it's fair to say that um, certainly FIFA, CONCACAF, CONMEBOL, the soccer federations whose officials have engaged in bribery are victims in the case, and their constituents, uh, including the youth leagues and the other um, and the other members of those bodies that rely on them for support, are, are harmed by the corruption of their officials and former officials. Uh, if there comes a point in time that uh, victims such as those or victims uh, of different types uh, can come before the court and apply for restitution. Uh, we're certainly hopeful that uh, those types of true victims, the constituents of those soccer organizations and others, uh, can get some of these forfeiture proceedings, these forfeiture um, uh, monies that have been collected to date. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you.